Hello everyone, my name is Ian, you're watching Big Rock Moto, and thank you so much for tuning in today. Now, I normally own and ride adventure bikes really due to their ruggedness, their versatility, their comfort, um, being able to go on any road. I like the way they look, I like the riding position, and a lot of riders have adopted adventure bikes for all these reasons. Now, with that said, I have owned and rated a number of touring and sport touring bikes. I've owned a BMW K1200 LT. I've owned a Yamaha FJR 1300. I've had a couple different Kawasaki Concourse. I've had a Triumph Tiger 1050. I've had a lot of other bikes that were designed just to travel on the road only. So I do have experience with that kind of motorcycle. I just got back from riding this bike, BMW's K1600 Grand America. It uses an inline six cylinder engine, the only one in production today in a motorcycle, 160 horsepower. The bike weighs over 800 pounds. It's an absolute beast, um, but it's very smooth and has a lot of good qualities to it. So check out my full review on this bike, which if it hasn't launched soon, will, will launch very soon if it hasn't already. So on this four day sort of sport touring ride that I just got back from, I was making notes on some observations I had about the reality of traveling and touring on a bike like this versus an adventure bike. And I wanted to share those observations with you and get your feedback to see sort of, am I crazy or have you guys experienced this too? So uh, please comment below as we go through this and, and let me know what you guys think. So the first thing that really stood out to me about touring on this bike and was present on my mind pretty much the entire time, no matter what I was doing, was the weight. So. <laughs> There's only one situation where the weight can potentially be a good thing, and that's when you're traveling at high speed on the freeway, and there's a lot of wind turbulence and things like that, although this particular bike doesn't handle that well for some reason. Uh, but that's the only time it's good. Other than that, I found the enormous weight of this bike to be a real downside. Um, just pulling over to the side of the road to take a photo or have a drink or just maneuvering it in a parking lot at a restaurant or a hotel. Um, it does have reverse gear, which works very well, and you do have to use it because the bike is so heavy. Um, but if you, once you get the bike tipped over or off center, if you're on uneven ground, you feel that 800 pounds, it's very noticeable and the bike feels very top heavy. So the weight was uh, something that hampered my enjoyment of, of touring with this bike. Another thing I noticed about this bike um, and kind of street bikes or sportier bikes in general compared to a lot of adventure bikes is the steering lock. So the steering doesn't turn very sharply. So what that means is that, you know, doing tighter U-turns or maneuvering in, small, in tight situations in parking lots or, or pullouts or things like that, um, it takes a long, a, a big distance to turn this thing around, more like a car. So that's, it's not a huge deal, but it's something that definitely um, I noticed. The third thing I want to talk about, and this was kind of a surprising one for me, when you think of a touring bike like this, supposed to be like grand touring, you think, oh, it's going to be a really smooth ride. Well, I think that's all relative thing because I actually found that uh, because the bike has so little suspension travel, maybe like four inches or so compared to what I'm used to it, more like eight inches of suspension travel, it doesn't have the ability to absorb larger bumps in the road. So it's okay with smaller bumps and imperfections, but larger pavement seams or cracks or potholes or dips or anything like that, the bike rides very rough and you can hear everything rattling. And so, uh, Overall, I was very surprised by kind of how stiff it rode, and I did try the different modes with, with which adjust the suspension. It is electronic suspension, but I think that's just something that you have to realize is that you would think you would have a super smooth ride, but it doesn't always have that because it's limited by the much smaller amount of suspension travel they have. And they have less suspension travel so they can keep the bike lower to the ground and achieve a 29 in seat height like this bike has. So for number four, you probably think I'm being all negative about this bike or this category of bikes, and that's absolutely not true. There's a lot of things I really love about it. Um, one thing, and probably the biggest thing that stood out to me was this luggage. So the fact that it's integrated fully to the bike, meaning it's fully attached to the bike without any straps or anything like that, um, but also it's central locking. So literally you come up to the bag, you know, you push a button, you do that, and the luggage is open. And then to close it, that's it, and then you walk away. You can lock all the bags with one button, either here on the handlebars, you can hear it locking, or from the key fob as well. So the ability to sort of throw stuff in the luggage and then you know uh, walk away, lock it, go into a restaurant, go into a hotel, was quite amazing after being used to soft luggage on adventure bikes for so many years. Or even hard luggage on adventure bikes where you're struggling with those little keys that always drop on the ground and the little locks that can never seem to work smoothly. So 
it was so convenient. And the top box, being able to have like maps and snacks and water and stuff all in the top box, I could just easily get in, into and out of with one button, uh, was amazing. So it made my life so convenient. And then when I got to a hotel at night, um, I could just pull my, pull my sort of backpack out of the side bag, walk into the hotel, and that was it. There's not a single strap anywhere on this bike, so no soft straps to deal with. So that is an amazing feature, and I can see why people like this for the convenience of that. The fifth thing that uh, I wanna point out is the electronic windshield. So if I turn on the ignition, um, the bike has electronic windshield control. The reason that that's nice is that as you're riding, depending on how fast you're going, how hot it is, if you want wind or you don't, you can raise this up or down. Now, there are some ups and downs to this for sure because I found that the buffeting is actually more buffeting than you would think. Um, but I was able to kind of find a sweet spot just by using the button on the handlebar instead of having to use a manual adjustment mechanism or as a case with some bikes, you have no adjustment at all. So that was a nice thing to have. The bike also has these wings uh, that fold out to suck air into and put more wind on your torso. So, so that was pretty convenient to have. The sixth thing I wanna talk about is the comfort. So I was just a, kind of thinking that, well, this is more comfortable because it's like a dedicated touring bike but actually I didn't find that to be true. And I think here's some reasons for that. We already talked about the wind buffeting, which was more than I was expecting. The other thing is the, the leg position. So these bikes, whether it's the Goldwing or this K1600 or a lot of these more uh, touring oriented bikes, they have the seats down low. So you get like a 30 inch seat height in many cases, which is lower than an adventure bike. But because of that, it puts your leg, I'm pretty tall, I'm five foot 11 and I have a 32 inch inseam. So it kind of puts my, my knees really high and my hip angle is kind of strange. I'd rather be sitting kind of up here and have more leg room. So I would like to have a taller seat. I could probably get that if this was my own bike, but I wasn't as comfortable as I was hoping. Now you're thinking, okay, the floorboards, this does have forward floorboards because it's the Grand America. That helps stretch your legs out, but then it puts, your, it puts this whole angle of your body in a weird position and it really hurt my back, my shoulder blades and my neck a lot. And actually it's still hurting. Um, so this position was kind of weird. You can kind of put one hand on the bar and lean back like this, kind of pretend you're cruising, you know. Um, so I'm not sure, the comfort was not as good as I was hoping. The seventh and final thing I wanna talk about, which really uh, surprised me how much this affected uh, how I felt when on this tour, was that with a bike like this, you really, you really have to stay on the pavement. Now that may sound like, well, you're just complaining, like you're just being silly. Why do you have to go in the dirt? Well. The thing is, a lot of times I just see a gravel or dirt road that I just wanna go down, even for just a few hundred yards or maybe a mile or two. Or what if I just need to pull off the side of the highway into some soft sand or some rocky areas because I wanna take a certain photograph or get some water, have a snack or just do something. I have to be extremely careful and plan anywhere I'm gonna stop on this because it'll dig into sand. Um, it's, it's really heavy. You can puncture the tires on rocks. The, the not having the ability to do any off-roading at all and the feeling of being so heavy and so fragile really uh, impact on my enjoyment of the whole ride, just not having the capability. Even if you're not planning to do a lot of off-road, you might just wanna do a little bit of dirt roads or take a shortcut that's a gravel road. Not having that ability, uh, I didn't think it would bug me, but it really did bug me. So I think that potentially all these things I've kind of talked about are some of the reasons why so many riders are switching to adventure bikes, even if they don't really plan to do off-roading with those adventure bikes, the advantages and comfort and versatility and some of the other things I talked about, the lower weight, uh, the better handling, the ability to go uh, on, on surfaces other than just smooth pavement, um, the smoother ride, uh, those things are important. And I, and I get why a lot of people are switching, but I also see why a lot of people like this style of bike. And I think if you're carrying a passenger, this would be amazing for that with this backrest and all this room and the big wide seat, uh, the convenience of the hard luggage, the sportier styling, the, the power from the engine, the smoothness of the engine. Those things are things that, you know, we definitely cannot discount. So if you're asking me like honestly and personally, you know, do the drawbacks or how do you compare the drawbacks and the positives of this kind of bike? And for me, it just reinforces the fact, you know, after I did this trip with this bike and thinking back to owning the bikes I've owned, it reinforces why I, when it comes time to spend my own hard earned dollars, I'll buy a BMW GS, I'll buy a Honda Africa Twin, I'd buy a Multistrada, I'd buy a KTM. I just want a motorcycle with the upright riding position, with the bigger wheels, with the more nimble handling, the lower weight, and the ability to go off road. 
I just find that to be a better use of my dollars. Like I'm getting more uh, sort of versatility, more practicality uh, for my dollar. Now, your mileage may vary and you may have a very different opinion. Uh, these bikes are great and if I was personally gonna buy something like this, I'd probably go maybe towards a Goldwing because of the lower center of gravity or I'd probably actually, if you force me, I'd probably buy the BMW RT. I find that to be a much more nimble, better handling, uh, less heavy touring bike with still a lot of amazing technology. So I hope you got have all have gotten some kind of use out of this, found some sort of value from this. Please uh, put something in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on this dilemma because it's an important dilemma with these bikes all kind of being expensive. There's a lot of expensive choices you can make um, in this category versus an adventure bike. So let me know what you think. Other than that, uh, please support Big Rock Moto. There's ways to do that in the description below. Please ride safe. We'll see you out there.